the Illuminati, unveiling the enigmatic secret society and its conspiracy theories. In the annals of history, few secret societies have captured the collective imagination quite like the Illuminati. Founded in 1776 by Adam Weishaupt, a professor of law at the University of Ingolstadt in Bavaria, this clandestine organization remains shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Weishaupt's inspiration for the Illuminati was drawn from the Enlightenment ideals of reason, liberty, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. The Illuminati was no mere fraternity, it was a society with a profound mission. At its core, the Illuminati was driven by a set of lofty goals to confront and combat superstition, to challenge obscurantism, to defy the undue influence of religion on public life, and to expose the rampant abuses of state power. It was a rallying cry for the champions of reason in an era dominated by entrenched dogmas. Despite its relatively diminutive size, boasting only a few hundred members at its zenith, the Illuminati wielded significant influence. Its ranks included luminaries of the era, intellectual giants like Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Gotthold Ephraim Lessing, and Johann Gottfried Herder. Their shared commitment to the Enlightenment's ideals united them in a quest to reshape the world. The structure of the Illuminati was modeled on the Masonic order, with members progressing through three distinct degrees, Minerval, Illuminatus Minor, and Illuminatus Major. Secrecy and obedience were paramount, with strict vows of silence regarding the Illuminati's inner workings and a prohibition on divulging its secrets to outsiders. Meetings convened by the Illuminati remain enshrouded in mystery. While the specifics of their gatherings are elusive, it is known that they delved into philosophical discourse and eagerly embraced the era's scientific discoveries. The Illuminati was more than a clandestine society. It was a crucible for Enlightenment ideals. In 1785, the Bavarian government, fearing the Illuminati's growing influence, outlawed the society. Weishaupt was forced into exile, and the Illuminati's activities went underground. Yet, despite the ban, the society continued its clandestine operations, thriving in the shadows. As the 19th century dawned, the Illuminati's power gradually waned, and it eventually dissolved. However, its legacy endured, its name etched in the annals of history as a symbol of the relentless pursuit of knowledge and the quest to challenge authority. Yet, Perhaps the most enduring legacy of the Illuminati is not its historical existence, but the enduring fascination and conspiracy theories it has spawned. While there is no credible evidence supporting these claims, they persist in popular culture. Some conspiracy theorists claim that the Illuminati continues to exist and exerts control over the world's governments and financial institutions. According to this theory, the Illuminati manipulates global events to further its own agenda. Another popular theory suggests that the Illuminati played a hidden role in many major historical events, including the French Revolution and the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Proponents of this theory believe that these events were orchestrated by the Illuminati to advance its objectives. Perhaps the most notorious conspiracy theory posits that the Illuminati is plotting to establish a new world order, a totalitarian regime that would encompass the entire globe. This theory alleges that the Illuminati seeks to consolidate power and control over humanity. It is important to note that these conspiracy theories lack credible evidence and mainstream historians widely dismiss them. While the Illuminati's historical existence is well documented, its influence was limited and it disbanded in the early 19th century. There is no substantiated evidence to suggest that the Illuminati continues to operate today. The enduring allure of the Illuminati may stem from its offering a simple, albeit ominous, explanation for complex and bewildering global events. In a world marked by rapid change and profound uncertainty, the notion of a shadowy, all-powerful cable pulling the strings can provide a comforting, if unsettling, narrative. Ultimately, the Illuminati is a myth, a creation of our own collective imagination. It reflects our fears our insecurities, and our desire for order in a world fraught with chaos. While the Illuminati may have faded into history, its legend continues to intrigue and captivate, 
a testament to the enduring power of mystery and the human thirst for understanding. The Knights Templar, founded in 1118 in the aftermath of the First Crusade, initially consisted of a small group of knights led by Hugues de Payens. Their primary mission was to protect Christian pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land during the time of the Crusades. They established their headquarters in Jerusalem, near the Temple of Solomon, from which they derived their name. Over time, they developed a reputation for their unwavering commitment to safeguarding pilgrims, which earned them increasing support from both the church and European nobility. As the years passed, the Knights Templars' influence and role expanded considerably. They evolved into a formidable military order, marked by their distinctive white mantles adorned with a red cross. Their disciplined combat skills and bravery on the battlefield made them a crucial force in the Crusades. They fought in numerous pivotal battles, including the iconic Battle of Hatton in 1187, where their defeat by the Muslim forces under Saladin marked a turning point in the Crusades. The Knights Templar's ascent was accompanied by immense wealth. They became a financial powerhouse, largely due to the generous donations they received from supporters throughout Europe. Nobles and monarchs, inspired by their dedication, entrusted vast sums of money and assets to the order. This financial strength not only bolstered the Templars' military capabilities, but also made them influential lenders and bankers, further increasing their prominence in medieval society. However, the order's wealth and influence eventually became a source of jealousy and suspicion. King Philip IV of France, deeply indebted to the Templars and wary of their loyalty to the Pope, orchestrated their downfall. In a shocking move in 1307, he ordered the simultaneous arrest of all Knights Templar in France. Subsequently, many Templars were subjected to brutal torture and coerced into confessing to heresy. While these confessions were obtained under duress, they fueled accusations of religious deviations within the order. In 1312, Pope Clement V dissolved the Knights Templar, marking the end of their official existence as a military and religious order. Jacques de Molay, the Grand Master of the Templars, along with several other high-ranking members, met their end at the stake, a grim conclusion to an era of influence and intrigue. The legacy of the Knights Templar remains a subject of debate and fascination. Some argue that they were unjustly accused and victimized by political machinations, while others contend that they harbored heretical beliefs. The unresolved mystery of their treasure, believed by some to hold vast riches and secrets, continues to captivate treasure hunters and historians alike. Speculations about the treasure's location persist, with theories ranging from hidden European vaults to distant lands like the Americas and Africa. The Knights Templar's enduring allure is evident in their presence in popular culture. They serve as a wellspring of inspiration for books, films, and video games. Additionally, conspiracy theories surrounding their purported hidden knowledge and the Holy Grail continue to capture the imagination of those intrigued by historical enigmas. In essence, the Knights Templar represent a complex and multifaceted chapter in history, marked by heroism, controversy, wealth, persecution, and enduring mysteries that continue to intrigue and captivate people worldwide. Imagine a clandestine world where secret symbols, ancient rituals, and eminent historical figures converge. This enigmatic realm is none other than Freemasonry, an age-old fraternal organization shrouded in mystique and steeped in centuries of tradition. Join us as we unravel the veiled origins, delve into the core principles, step into the hallowed lodges, explore the influence of renowned members, confront misconceptions, and celebrate the global tapestry of Freemasonry. Historical Origins the enigmatic roots of Freemasonry have led many to label it as one of the world's greatest mysteries. Its journey through time begins with the Stomason guilds of medieval Europe. These craftsmen, responsible for the awe-inspiring cathedrals that still grace the continent, held closely guarded secrets and a unique system of symbols. As centuries passed, these ancient guilds gave birth to the Freemasonry we know today. The transformation was marked by the absorption of the Stomason's symbolism and rituals as well as the incorporation of elements from chivalry and Christian virtues. Thus, Freemasonry became a rich tapestry woven from diverse threads of tradition. Core Principles At the heart of Freemasonry lie three foundational principles, brotherhood, equality, and mutual assistance. These principles resonate through the ages, underpinning a Masonic ethos. For Freemasons, the journey is one of continuous self-improvement, a quest to hone their moral compass and nurture their character. Charity and community service form the bedrock of their endeavors, 
reflecting an unwavering commitment to giving back to society. Lodge meetings, the hallowed halls of Masonic lodges, echo with centuries of tradition and camaraderie. Within these sacred spaces, Freemasons gather for a multifaceted experience. Rituals shrouded in symbolism are conducted with solemnity, evoking the ancient heritage of the craft. Lectures and discussions delve into profound topics, fostering intellectual growth and enlightenment among members. Yet Freemasonry is not solely a solemn affair. Social events forge bonds of friendship and unity among brethren. It is within these lodges that the principles of Freemasonry are brought to life through meaningful interaction and shared experiences. Prominent Members The annals of history are replete with the names of prominent Freemasons who have left an indelible mark on the world. George Washington, the revered first president of the United States, is counted among their ranks. Benjamin Franklin, a polymath and one of the founding fathers, found inspiration within Masonic lodges. Winston Churchill, the stalwart British prime minister, was a Freemason during tumultuous times. The humor and wisdom of Mark Twain, the literary luminary, were also influenced by the craft. The industrial prowess of Henry Ford and the stellar journey of astronaut Buzz Aldrin both bear the Masonic imprint. These luminaries, among many others, reflect the breadth of influence that Freemasonry has had on the world. Controversies and Misconceptions The shadowy aura surrounding Freemasonry has given rise to a tapestry of misconceptions and controversies. Some have erroneously cast Freemasonry as a clandestine society steeped in occult rituals. Others have painted it as an all-powerful puppet master, orchestrating global events from behind the scenes. Freemasons, however, firmly assert their commitment to benevolence, emphasizing their dedication to the values of brotherhood, equality, and mutual assistance. These misunderstandings persist, coexisting with the Masonic commitment to transparency and openness. Global Presence Freemasonry transcends geographical boundaries, fostering a global community of millions. While variations may exist across different Masonic jurisdictions, the unifying thread is the enduring adherence to its principles. Freemasonry is a diverse tapestry, weaving together individuals from myriad backgrounds, professions, and cultures. This inclusivity stands as a testament to the universality of the Masonic values, drawing people from all walks of life into its fold. In essence, Freemasonry is a timeless journey that traverses history, philosophy, and camaraderie. It embodies the pursuit of enlightenment, the commitment to moral growth, and the unwavering dedication to serving humanity. It stands as a testament to the enduring power of brotherhood, equality, and mutual assistance in shaping lives and influencing the world. Have you ever heard of the most secretive society in the United States? In the year 1832, two men, William Huntington Russell and Alfonso Taft, founded a society at Yale University. This society, known as Skull and Bones, quickly garnered a reputation for its exclusivity and secrecy. For nearly two centuries, it has been an emblem of prestige and mystery in American society. From its inception, Skull and Bones has been shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Joining Skull and Bones isn't your run-of-the-mill club sign-up. This is an invitation into a world shrouded in mystery and prestige. Each year, a select group of Yale seniors, usually no more than 15, are chosen for membership in a process known as tapping. Now, this isn't a tap on the shoulder during a casual lunch break. It's a covert operation conducted under a veil of secrecy. The criteria? Well, that's known only to the existing members. But once you're in, you're in for life. There's no resignation, no opting out. You are a bonesman through and through. And why would you want to leave? You're part of an exclusive society that's been the subject of countless conspiracy theories and speculations. You are in the company of some of the most influential figures in history. Only a select few ever have the honor of being tapped into this clandestine society. Ever wonder what happens inside the windowless tomb of Skull and Bones? The initiation rituals of this exclusive society are shrouded in the deepest secrecy. Inside this imposing structure, adorned with eerie symbols and ancient artifacts, new members are believed to partake in a series of elaborate and symbolic acts. These could include anything from taking on secret names to performing undisclosed rites. But once you're in, you're in for life. Each member is bound by a strict code of silence, with all matters related to the society's activities, rituals and discussions kept under wraps. This unwavering vow of secrecy is the society's bedrock, fueling countless conspiracy theories and speculations about its true nature and influence. 
While some conjecture that skull and bones wield significant power over global affairs, solid evidence remains elusive. So, while what happens inside the tomb stays inside the tomb, speculation runs wild. Skull and Bones isn't just a college club. Its influence reaches far beyond the Yale campus. The Society's roster of alumni reads like a who's who of American power and prestige. Many of its members have gone on to hold influential positions in various sectors from law and business to academia and media. But perhaps the most renowned Bonesmen are the father-son duo of former presidents George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush, adding a presidential flourish to the society's already impressive pedigree. But Skull and Bones isn't just about influence, it's also about symbols. The society's emblem prominently features a skull and crossbones, a motif traditionally associated with mortality and death. This symbol alone is enough to pique curiosity and raise eyebrows. But the intrigue doesn't stop there. The number 322 is also intrinsically linked to the society. The precise significance of this number remains a subject of speculation, adding another layer to the society's mystique. These symbols aren't just for show. They play a significant role in the society's rituals and identity. They contribute to the aura of secrecy and fascination that surrounds skull and bones keeping us guessing about what really goes on behind the closed doors of their imposing windowless tomb. The society's symbols and influential alumni fuel its aura of mystery. With secrecy and power comes criticism and controversy. Skull and Bones, with its veiled operations and elite membership, has not been immune to these challenges. Over the years, the society has been scrutinized for its exclusive nature, raising eyebrows and questions alike. The perceived privilege and potential influence that Bonesmen might wield in wider society have sparked considerable debate, with skeptics questioning the society's underlying principles and intentions. Perhaps even more fascinating are the conspiracy theories that orbit around Skull and Bones. From allegations of political manipulation to supposed involvement in occult practices, the society has been the subject of a myriad of conjectures adding another layer to its already intricate tapestry of mystery. Despite the controversy, Skull and Bones remains an enduring enigma, a source of intrigue and curiosity emblematic of the enduring allure of secret societies. As it stands shrouded in intrigue, it continues to be a testament to the enduring fascination we hold for the secret, the hidden, and the powerful. The Priory of Sion is a shadowy and enigmatic entity steeped in mystery, its history and significance clouded by layers of intrigue and controversy. Its alleged origins are said to date back to the 11th century in Jerusalem, where it was supposedly established as a monastic order with a unique mission. According to certain narratives, its purpose was to safeguard ancient secrets of profound significance, and its existence is intricately woven into various conspiracy theories, most notably those concerning the Holy Grail. The connection between the Priory of Sion and the Holy Grail is perhaps the most enduring and captivating aspect of its lore. The Holy Grail, often depicted as the cup used by Jesus Christ during the Last Supper, has been a subject of fascination and speculation for centuries. It is suggested that the Priory of Sion possessed hidden knowledge or records pertaining to the Grail, including its possible whereabouts or symbolic significance. This association with the Grail has fueled numerous theories and narratives about the Priory. In the realm of historical figures, the Priory of Sion is linked to several prominent names, further adding to its mystique. One of the most well-known claims is that Leonardo da Vinci, the Renaissance genius, served as a grand master of the Priory. Proponents of this theory argue that Leonardo's artworks, such as the Mona Lisa and The Last Supper, contain hidden messages and symbolism related to the Priory's secrets. Similarly, Mary Magdalene is often intertwined with the Priory's lore, with some theories suggesting a romantic connection between her and Jesus, which the Priory supposedly sought to protect. The 20th century saw the emergence of a set of documents known as the Dossier Secrets, which purportedly contained evidence supporting the existence and activities of the Priory of Sion. These documents included references to historical events and figures and appeared to authenticate the Priory's historical significance. However, these documents were later revealed to be elaborate forgeries, raising serious doubts about the credibility of the Priory's claims. 
The popularization of the Priory of Sion reached new heights with the publication of Dan Brown's novel, The Da Vinci Code, and its subsequent film adaptation. The book weaves elements of Priory-related conspiracy theories into its narrative, propelling the society into the mainstream consciousness and sparking widespread interest in its supposed secrets. Despite the intrigue and allure surrounding the Priory of Sion, many scholars and historians remain skeptical of its authenticity as a historical organization. Instead, it is often regarded as a modern invention or a clever hoax. The debate over its legitimacy continues to this day, with questions about its origins, purpose, and influence lingering in the realms of speculation and mystery. In summary, the Priory of Sion is a subject of fascination and intrigue, with a history shrouded in ambiguity and controversy. Its alleged ties to the Holy Grail, historical figures like Leonardo da Vinci, and the publication of the Dossier Secrets, have all contributed to its mystique. However, its authenticity remains a subject of debate, leaving the Priory of Sion firmly ensconced in the realm of enigmatic historical mysteries. Have you ever wondered about the secretive Catholic organization known as Opus Dei? In the heart of Spain, in the year 1928, a unique chapter in the story of the Catholic Church was being written. Saint Josmaria Escriva, a Spanish priest, founded an institution that would later be officially known as the Prelature of the Holy Cross and Opus Dei. This wasn't just another Catholic organization. Its mission was distinct and deeply rooted in promoting a devout and committed Catholic faith among its members. But here's the twist. Opus Dei emphasized that the path to holiness wasn't confined to traditional religious practices like attending Mass or prayer. Instead, it taught that individuals could find divinity in their everyday lives and secular work. Imagine viewing your daily tasks as opportunities for spiritual growth and service to God. This distinctive approach to spirituality has shaped Opus Dei's identity and influence within the Catholic Church. The so who are the members of Opus Dei, and how is the organization structured? Let's delve into this question. The Opus Dei community is a diverse blend of lay people and clergy, with individuals from all walks of life. They are categorized into numeraries, associates, and priests. Numeraries who live celibately often reside in Opus Dei centers and dedicate a significant portion of their income to the organization while maintaining their professional careers. Then we have associates. These members, married or single, live and work in the wider community but actively participate in Opus Dei's activities. Last but not least are the priests, who not only serve the spiritual needs of the community, but also administer the organization's activities. All members of Opus Dei commit to a structured daily routine that encompasses prayer, self-discipline, and spiritual reflection. This rigorous and disciplined lifestyle is a core part of Opus Dei's teachings and mission. What's behind the veil of secrecy that surrounds Opus Dei? And why has it been so controversial? This question has piqued the curiosity of many, sparking both intrigue and contention. Opus Dei, known for its distinctive spiritual practices, is equally recognized for its high level of secrecy. Members are often advised against sharing their affiliation, and their gatherings are usually held under strict confidentiality. This cryptic demeanor has sparked significant curiosity about the organization's internal dynamics and its sphere of influence. This secrecy, however, has also led to a wave of criticism. It has fueled speculation and numerous conspiracy theories, making Opus Dei a subject of intense scrutiny and debate. The organization's conservative stance on various social and moral issues has been another point of controversy. Critics argue that such perspectives, especially when combined with the group's alleged influence in political, financial, and educational realms, could potentially shape society in a way that not everyone agrees with. An additional layer of controversy was added with the portrayal of Opus Dei in popular culture, most notably in Dan Brown's novel, the Da Vinci Code, and its film adaptation. The organization was depicted as a secretive and manipulative entity, further cementing its controversial image in the public eye. Despite these criticisms, Opus Dei has consistently defended its practices and beliefs. It argues that its operations are in line with the Catholic Church's framework, 
aiming to foster spiritual growth and holiness among its members. Regarding concerns about its secretive nature, the organization asserts that this privacy is a common practice among religious orders and is necessary to create an environment conducive to personal spiritual development. These controversies have fueled ongoing debates about Opus Dei's role and impact within the Catholic Church and society at large. Whether seen as a force for deep spiritual commitment or a secretive, controversial entity, Opus Dei continues to be a magnet for attention, discussion, and scrutiny. The organization's distinct approach to spirituality and its secretive nature have elicited both staunch support and heated criticism. The debate continues, and the fascination with Opus Dei remains, as does the scrutiny of its influence and impact. Despite the controversies, what stands at the heart of Opus Dei? The organization asserts it's their commitment to fostering spiritual growth and promoting holiness among its members. They argue that their practices, though unique and often misunderstood, operate within the framework of the Catholic Church. The secrecy that surrounds them? They say it's not much different from the privacy observed in many religious orders designed to nurture an environment conducive to personal spiritual development. Opus Dei's influence, whether viewed as positive or negative, cannot be denied. Its teachings, focusing on sanctifying the mundane aspects of daily life, continue to resonate with many, even as they invite scrutiny and debate. It's this duality that makes Opus Dei a magnet for both staunch supporters and vehement critics. As Opus Dei continues its mission, it remains a fascinating and polarizing subject within the broader world of the Catholic Church.